One day, Percy arrived at the quarry to collect some stone for his freight cars. Snow and frost lay everywhere. There was not a sound to be heard. Percy ventured further. He found Mavis, the new diesel engine, resting in the shelter of some rocks. Cheer up, Mavis, he whistled. Mavis was still remembering the trouble she'd had with cars. Manager says I don't listen to advice. He says I have no business jauntering down Toby's line. Toby's a fuss pot. Toby has forgotten more about freight cars than you will ever know, replied Percy. You must put the cars where he wants them. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to take these stones to the harbor. Mavis liked Percy, but she still wouldn't listen to his advice. Why shouldn't I go on Toby's line? The siding arrangements were awkward. To put the cars where Toby wanted them, Mavis had to make several journeys. She started making a plan. If we used the teeniest bit of Toby's line, she said to her driver, we would save all this bother. Her driver, suspecting nothing, allowed them to go as far as the first level crossing. A few days later, the weather changed. As the snow melted, the quarry grew busy again. Some trains were so long that before leaving the cars for Toby, Mavis had to go beyond the level crossing with them. Now for her plan. She would go further down the line without it seeming her fault. Can you keep a secret? She asked the freight cars. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell no one I asked you? The cars promised. But while Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the cars himself. The cars decided to bump him anyway. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes came on. This was the signal for the freight cars. On, 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 they yelled. Toby was away with the cars screaming and yelling behind him. No one realized that melted snow had turned a stream ahead into a torrent and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rails were now like a tightrope across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They came nearer and nearer to the bridge. It was all or nothing now. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails, but with his wheels treading the tightrope over the abyss. Mavis was horrified and quickly came to the rescue. Workman anchored Toby with ropes while she pulled the freight cars away. Then she helped Toby to safety. I'm sorry about the cars, said Mavis. I can't think how you managed to stop them in time. Oh, well, said Toby, my driver told me about circus people who walk tightropes, but I just didn't fancy doing it myself. Later, Sir Topham had arrived. A very smart piece of work, he said. Mavis, you did well, too, I hear. It was my fault about those cars, sir, she faltered. But if I could... Could what? Come down the line sometimes, sir? Toby says he'll show me what to do. Certainly, replied Sir Topham Hatch if your manager agrees. And so it was arranged. 
Now Mavis is as happy as can be, and Sir Topham Hatt thinks she's really useful indeed.